that was it. <laughs> All right. Um, I think we are live. Yes, we are live as of seven seconds ago. So I imagine um, folks are coming in and uh, joining us. And I am very excited to be here. Uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you all so much for joining us for this exciting event to celebrate the release of Miyako Kawakami's stunning, stunning book, um, All the Lovers in the Night. I um, am super glad to be back and sharing, I'm just honored to share a screen with you again, Miyako. Um, Tom Below had the great pleasure of hosting Miyako back in um, Black last year for the now Booker Prize, International Booker Prize finalist, Heaven, shortlist, one of the shortlists for the Booker Prize, which is incredibly exciting. Congratulations. Um, I am the events coordinator from Tom Below Books. I think I said my name is Kelsey. Um, we're located in St. Petersburg, Florida. And on behalf of everyone here at Tom Below, our owners, Alsace Valentin and Candace Anderson and the entire staff, we would like to wholeheartedly thank our um, host this evening, Books and Books, the Miami Book Fair, uh, Politics and Prose out in DC and the Harvard Bookstore for inviting Tom Below to be part of this incredible event and for allowing me to do this introduction. Um, we are so thrilled to be here and so thrilled to be part of these incredible indie bookstores for this celebration. Um, I would also like to thank the folks at Europa Editions for uh, helping organize this event and for their continued unyielding support of indie bookstores across the country. And finally, to you, all of the audience members uh, for joining us and supporting indies across the East Coast, um, for purchasing and pre-ordering this book and showing early support for it. And um, for just being here this evening, your support means so much to all of us. And please feel free to leave your questions for the authors in the chat box, and we will get, that, get to that at the end um, of the interview. So without further ado, I am going to inter uh, introduce our interviewer this evening. Um, we have Kali Baradu, um, Farhardu Honestine. She's from Denver, Colorado. She's the author of Sabrina and Karina, the fa a finalist for the National Book Award, the Penn Bingham Prize, the Clark Prize, the Story Prize, um, and the winner of an American Book Award. She is a 2021 recipient of the Addison M. Metcalf Award from the American Academy of Arts and Letters. Her work has been honored with the Denver Mayor's Award for Global Impact in the Arts and the Mountains and Plains Independent Booksellers Association Reading the West Award. She has written for the New York Times, Harper's Bazaar, L.O., um, Oprah Magazine, The American Scholar, Boston Review, and elsewhere, and has received fellowships from McDowell, Yaddo, um, Hedgebrook, and Tin House. She's earned her MFA from the University of Wyoming and has lived across the country from Durango, Colorado to Key West, Florida, which is just down the road from us. She is the 2022-2023 Endowed Chair of Creative Writing at Texas State University. Her debut novel, is Woman of Light and is published in June of 2022, just next month. So please pre-order Kali's book from your local indie bookstore. Um, we're super excited to see that come out, Kali. Thank you so much for being here with us this evening. Um, and of course, we have Mieko Kawakami, who's the author of the internationally best-selling novel, Breast and Eggs, a New York Times notable book of the year and one of Time's best top 10 books of 2020. And a highly, her highly acclaimed Heaven, uh, the second novel to be translated and published in English, which, as I said, is a shortlist for the International Booker Prize, and um, is also uh, was Oprah Daily described as written with jagged and visceral beauty. And I could not agree more, Oprah. Born in Osaka, Japan, Kawakami made her literary debut as poet in 2006 and in 2007, published her first novella, My Ego, My Teeth, and the World, and known for their, her books are known for their poetic quality, their insights into the female body, their preoccupation with ethics and modern society, and her books have been translated in over 20 languages. Kawakami's literary awards uh, include the Akutagawa Award, the Tanzakagi Award, the um, Murasaki Shibiku Prize, and she lives in Tokyo, Japan. So Mieko, thank you for being with us this evening. Thanks so much. Uh, thank you for, uh, thank you for logging around the world. Mm. I'm looking forward to yeah. the conversation. Kari, yoroshiku onegaishimasu. 
Great to be with you, Kelly. Yeah, and finally we meet. <laughs> yes, I, I'm so excited. So Mieko and I, we did an in conversation on, in Elle magazine back in 2020 when Breast and Eggs first came out. And since then, I've read all of your books that have been translated into English, Mieko. And it's just such an honor to be here with you tonight. So I am so excited to talk about your beautiful new book. So I want to start off with a question about character. Um, when I'm reading your work, one of the things that really grabs me right away, they're the voices of your characters. They feel so real and so authentic. And I have not really read very many novels that have a woman loner character at the forefront of the plot of the storyline. And so when I was reading this book, I really wondered where did Fuyuko first come from? How did she reveal herself to you as a character? So, I know, Kari ga ima itte kureta yo ni, I know, so, I know, Fuyuko mi tai na character te, a m a r i い,いないんですよね。で、に日本文学のなんか女性を主人公にした物語ってすごくたくさんあるんですが、あの、あそこまで、こう、なんていうのかな、あの、極端にすごくこう自分で思ったことはあんまり言わない。なまあ、内政的で。で、すごい職業も、まあ、高圧者で、こう、抑圧的なところで、こう、こう、なんていうのかな。青白い炎のようにじっとしてる人が主人公になってっていう小説、私もあんまり読んだことがなかったんですね。で、あの、ただすごく、あの、たくさんいると思ったの。なんかサイレントマジョリティっていうかさ。うん。で、その時すごくああいう人物を書きたいなっていう気持ちになって、うん、あの、造形していきました。So as you just said, Kali, there's not really many characters like mm -hmm. Fuyuko in, in literature, I think. Within Japanese literature, there are many books which have a, a female protagonist, but someone who's in this quite sort of extreme situation of, you know, not really speaking up uh, herself, very inward looking. And of course, her profession as a proofreader is something where she's really suppressing mm -hmm. herself in a way. It's like this kind of flickering blue flame in a sense. And I, I hadn't really read many, many characters such as this before, but at the same time, I think people like Fuyuko are somewhat of a silent majority. There are so many people like that actually in the world. So I really wanted to, to portray such a character and that was how, how she was created. Yeah, you know, I mentioned, you know, in the question I was thinking about how there were times when I felt really uh, connected for Yuko, and that was when she was revealing her innermost secrets. And I thought, wow, you know, I, I'm a character like this myself in some ways. So yeah, I really felt that connection, and I was glad to see that portrayal in literature. So another one of my questions has to do with the, the big philosophical ideas that populate all of your work. And one of the great pleasures of reading All the Lovers in the Night is being able to sit with the enormous philosophical questions that are posed by both Hijiri and Fiyoko and other characters. Um, I'm thinking of Hijiri describing her thoughts on human emotion, uh, Fuyuko pondering the nature of light and time, um, and her search for perfection within her work as a proofreader. But of course, as we learn, there's no such thing as a perfect book. At no point does the authenticity of these characters or their consciousness ever collapse under the weight of these big philosophical ideas. Your work reminds me of Tolstoy or Dostoevsky in that way. I read in the Guardian article that you described yourself as a quiet philosophical child. I'm wondering if you can discuss the role of philosophy in this book and in your books in general. うん、そうね。あの、やっぱり、あの、あの、私は詩も書くし、小説も書くんですけど、あの、やっぱり、なんか、モチベーションというか、小説を、あのフィクションを書こうとするときに、どうしてもその、やっぱり今、カリが、カリさんが言ってくれたみたいに、哲学的なことが根っこにあるんですよね。で、すごく私たちの存在って、やっぱり、死に向かって生きているっていう、もともとにすごい絶対的な矛盾をはらんでいますよね。
So I, as well as writing novels, I also write poetry. And I think my motivation in writing fiction, as you've just said, Kali, as well, has its roots in these philosophical issues as well. Our very existence, of course, even as we're living, we're always heading towards death as well. And we're living with this really fundamental or definitive contradiction. So that, あの、このロバーズの中では語食、あの本っていうのはあの必ず語食があるんだけど、でもそれは発見された時に存在するっていうのもそのいわゆる量子論的な考え方で私たちの世界を作っているものすごく最初のあの路軸ですよね。And within lovers as well there is this concept of every book will always have a mistake in it. There is no book without a mistake, but that mistake itself only exists after it has been discovered. And this really connects, I think, to these, these very existential questions about, you know, even, even life itself and so on as well. あの、光があるからで、で、光は何かっていうと、これは人間がまだ全然解明できてないんですね。光の正体っていうか、光っていうのが何なのか。でも色に関してはすべて残り物、光があの吸収して残った色を見ている。これも非常に哲学的で、な
So I think writing such scenes like this, and especially when you're thinking about the agency of the characters as well, it does take quite a certain sort of um, deliberateness and also courage to write that. And I think, Kali, in your work as well, you know, this is really something where not taking your eyes off the reality that is indeed there. うん、そうそう、and so for me, I think that looking at these things as, you know, what are happening in reality, whether it's to children or to people seen within society as being weak as well, I think our our role there as, as authors is how to write and even to change that in a sense. で、私その暴力的なシーンとか、その子供とかがすごくひどく、ひどい目に遭うというシーンについて書くっていうことについて考えるときにね、and when I am writing these, you know, violent scenes or scenes in which, you know, a child is in very difficult circumstances, there are some words of Dostoevsky that I always have in mind. で、and I believe that he had a, a regular column in, in a magazine or a journal. And some of the words that he, he wrote there was saying that he does write many, you know, terrible or cruel scenes in, in his work. But well, well, they are works of fiction. What is happening, those scenes, none of them are fiction. They are all indeed things that were in, in the newspaper that had been reported. These were awful things which were actually experienced by children, which were actually forced upon people in vulnerable positions. He said that he, he never once made up any of these, these terrible things which were happening, which he was including in his work. And so as a fiction writer, you know, thinking about how we approach these kind of things and also considering the agency as well there as well mm -hmm. with a very cautious approach, I'm always sort of trying to think about how best to comprehend his words. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, that's, that's really fascinating. And it, it makes me want to segue to a lighter topic. Your work is often very, very funny. Um, and I know that my, <laughs> I just asked the question about all this violence, but at the same time, there's a lot of humor. And one of the things I had a question about with your humor is there's often a play on words in English. And one of my questions was, does that work in translation where a word will sound similar? Like, I think there was one with collar and, um, and yeah, you know what I'm talking about. So um, I was just wondering how the humor works with language when you're translating, but also where do you think your humor comes from? Um, I am also thinking of the, the line where Hijiri's lips, Fuyuko describes them of being able to get up and walk around and live their own life. Um, I just wanna know more about your sense of humor and where you think that comes from in your work. I think that really comes to be the incredible skill of, of the translators, uh, David Boyd and Sam Bett, both from Preston Eggs Heaven and, and the new work as well. And so we look at, you know, what, what has been translated into English and then holding it up, you know, together with my original work in Japanese. 
、くどいんですよ、すごく。<笑> My Japanese is often quite sort of heavy and roundabout in a sense.、うん、で,で、例えばに、日本語のそのダジャレ、韻を踏んだりとか、ちょっとその、あの、日本語の言葉遊びを他の言語にするって、本当と想像もつかないんだけど、And so, this even trying to think about you know, how to, to express these, these puns or wordplay in Japanese in a different language is something that I can't even really imagine.、Mm-hmm. 例えばね、あの、冬子が、こう、あ、三つかさんが眩しいって言った、眩しい。で、で冬子がそれを貧しいって聞き間違えるのね。で、その眩しいっていうのは日本あ、英語で言うとこう、まあ、あの、こう、シャイン、シャイン、シャインって感じ。で、貧しいってプアなのね。で日本語では音が似てるんだけど、この二つ意味が並ぶっていうのはすごく大事だったの。And so there is one particular scene in the book where the character Mitsutsuka,、uh, he makes a mistake between the words、uh, mabushi, which means shining or bright in Japanese, and mazushi, which means poor. And so the fact of having those two words right next to each other, which sound very similar, but have this completely contrasting meaning is something、uh, very important. でも、あの、その、そこなりとするときにデ、デビットはもう、あの、5秒ぐらいで出してきたんだよね。同じような意味になるように。But David came up with a similar wordplay that could be used in English to show the same kind of thing in about five seconds, actually. すごい。もうそういうことばっかりで、あの、本当に驚かされる。翻訳には本当に驚かされるの。で、あと、やっぱりどんな、なんかやっぱ辛いトーンのところがあっても、やっぱりひょうきんな感じになっちゃう。私の小説は。うん<laughs> and I think that, you know, I'm, I'm always completely astonished and, and surprised by, by this translation itself and this process. And this kind of thing happens so many times within, within the works and, and working with the translators. But I think that within my writing as well, whenever I'm writing about these very painful things as well, there, there's always this kind of different angle that comes into it. And I think the fact that I, I find this humor even in these very painful moments has a lot to do with the fact that I'm from Osaka. Um, And perhaps it's not the same for all people from Osaka, but you know, all, all that I know is well, no matter how difficult or tragic something is, people from Osaka will always find a way to you know, make a joke about it. So, I think that's what I'm saying. I'm going to say that 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 I'm going to say うん、こうね、そういう感じで、あの、私のその子供の時からスタイルがなってるから、こう、そうそう、悲しくて泣きながらも、この状況から自分に突っ込むことを考えてる。<laughs> and so, even since I was a child, because there's this play back and forth as well, where even if something awful and, and terrible happens and you're right in the midst of it, you're always thinking about how you can make fun of yourself within that and how you can turn it into something humorous as well. <laughs> so, even when, when I'm writing novels, it means that this, this kind of aspect <laughs> always comes part of it. So I'm really happy, Kali, that you said that you also find my works funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do. And,、um, you know, I'm a, a mixed Chicana from Denver. So when the humor sort of relates, I said, oh, wow, people from hard times are experiencing some of the same humor all over the world.、Um, and so I think in some ways I feel very at home in your work.、Um, which brings me to another question I had. About the vast experiences in your work, particularly that of women and the working class. Before I had read your work, Mieko, I had not been exposed to very much、uh, Japanese literature. I think I had read Mirakami in high school and Mishima in college,、um, but I had never seen people like your characters. And in All the Lovers of the Night, There, there's a lot of things about class and the working class that is mentioned, and in all of your work. I'm thinking of access to healthcare, as mentioned, freelance work, really low salaries, factory work that's gone bust.、Um, and at one point, an old high school friend 
tells Fuyuko that she had to give up her career after she got married in order to stay home and take care of the children. And so I would just love to hear you talk about class in Japan and class in general and how it's applied to your work. うん、そう、だからあの、日本ですごいあの、ちょっと前までやっぱ三島川端で、で、その、あの、現代でいくと、ま、大江村上っていうすごい、ま、読まれた作家がいるんだけど、やっぱりみんな、ま、男性だったよ
Uh, but I think it's the same thing in the United States and in Japan. But, you know, if a, a male writer who is seen as great, as great, you know, writes about something about the family, about the home, that's seen as it's, you know, evaluated, it's judged as something which is talking about history, about the state, about these big concepts. But when a female writer writes the same thing, it's seen as this sort of just domestic literature. But it is finally changing, I think. Mm. I hope so. For both of us, I hope so. <laughs> uh, that brings me to a question because of your work and feeling like I discovered it, even though I was with many, many other Americans discovering it at the same time, it led me to read other Japanese women novelists. And now I'm just obsessed. Somebody asked me what would be my dream class to teach the other day. And I said, I want to teach a class on contemporary Japanese women novelists. So I would love to know who do you think we should be reading? And is there anyone who has not been translated to English yet that you, you think that we should be reading here in the States? あの、たくさんいる本当に今日本文学って、あの、本当女性の書き手がすごいたくさんいて力のある人がもう本当にいます。で、あの、これからそうね、2000、そうそう、2000年、18年からぐらいぐらいからね、私10年ぐらい前から
がそれを読むっていうのはすごく局所的だったんだけど本当に本当に想像を超えるたくさんの人がよ読んでくれてで嬉しかったのがあのやっぱりなんだろう日本文学を読むっていうよりなんか自分皆さんが読んできた小説とか,なんか文学を読んできたっていう,なんていうのかなこうそういうものとして読んでくれたっていうのがすごく嬉しかったしそこ,、うん、そこがすごく嬉しかったよね。And so until that, perhaps it was, you know, whenever a Japanese work would come out in English, it would be read by people who are already researching Japanese literature or people who are sort of involved in that field, perhaps. But after Breast and X came out, being that it, it reached and, and was read by so many more people beyond even my imagination then as well, I think that it sort of transcended from just being received as, you know, Japanese literature to being received as something within the different novels, the different works that people had, had read until, until then as well. だからなんかさ日本私たちもそうと遠い国の知らない国のまだよく知らない文学を紹介されたらなんかその国について自分の知っている情報を足がかりにしてどうもやっぱりこう何か先入観を持っちゃうよね良くも悪くもね。うん And so when you're reading something, you know, from that was written in, you know, a country far away somewhere that's perhaps, you know, unknown to you, unfamiliar, um, you, you sort of always come into that, of course, with the, the little information that you may already have about that country, about that culture as well. And you use that as a way to, to grasp, to step into it. But that also brings different sort of uh, pre-assumptions in there as well. So it's all bad things, but it's also a culture. It's all good, but it's also a culture. 彼が発,発見、うん、ブレスタンデックスとか読んで、すごく、ああって、これは、なんかこう、私たちの物語なんだと思ってくれたみたいなところまで、なんか、読書を通じて、届いたなっていう実感というのは、本当にう嬉しくて。And of course, that's not necessarily always、uh, a negative thing. You know, it is part of, of culture in a sense as well. But like Kali, how you said when you discovered breasts and eggs in that sense as well, the way that when through the process of reading it, it can become part of your own story as well. And, and seeing、uh, how readers were really、uh, feeling it and experiencing it in that way was something which I was really glad about. こうこう地域のお土産店みたいなのがあるんですよ。そ,うそこの,あの地域の特産物とかを集めて期間限定で売るみたいな売り場があって。So、in Japanese department stores, there is often they'll set up a special corner where they're selling different、uh, produce or souvenirs, special goods from a particular location, you know, a particular part of Japan for a limited <laughs> period of time. The Bungaku is a very good t h i n 日本文学とか例えばね。ああのなんか一括りにやっぱりされて最初は紹介されるんでそれもいい,いいんだけどでもやっぱり私たち文学っていうのはそのカテゴリーとかラベリングの奥にあるその個性をそこでそれがあるっていうものにタッチしたいしそれを、うん、あのやりたいわけだからそこが届くと嬉しいよね。<笑> And the same thing often happens with literature. You know, it will be introduced within this, you know, narrow, confined、uh, category of you know, Japanese literature in a way. And of course, that, that has its place as well. That, that can be a good thing. But I think our literature, our work, it, it goes beyond these categories, these labeling in that sense as well. And it's that individuality and that, la- that is there outside of these categories that I think we really want to reach and touch there as well. So when I know that it's able to reach readers in that way, I, I'm very pleased about that. Well, thank you so much, Mieko. I recommend your books to everybody I come in contact with, and I've been teaching your works, and I'm just so excited to be publishing books at the same time as you. And it's been a pleasure getting to talk to you. I want to bring Kelsey back now to do the QA with the audience. Yes, thank you both so much.、Um, it's just like bookseller dream to listen to two such incredible authors have these kinds of conversations. And、um, Callie, I cannot wait to pick up your book. Again, Callie's book comes out in June,、um, her first novel,、uh, Women of Light. And I cannot wait to pick it up and read it.、Um, I'm so excited about that.、Um, 
And I want to, before we get to the questions, I want to say thank you very much to Mary, whose voice you're hearing a little bit in the background of Mieko's, um screen, who is our translator this evening. Um, brilliant, brilliant translator and um, who we could not do something like this without. So thank you so much, Mary, for um, just your general genius um, in the background of this. Um, so we have a couple of questions. Um, so the first is, um, what kind of influence do you think uh, the Osaka dialect has on your work, Mieko? お坂弁の影響、私のその本も。そうそう、お坂弁、お坂弁なんかね、あの、1回お坂弁で書い、2回か2回お坂弁で書いたらお坂弁で書く作家っていう風に言われたんだけど、そうじゃないんだよね。あ
。そうそう。あのー、まず、お、音ね。うん。あとのリ、リズムが一番大きいですかね。うん。あの、なんだろう。あの、そう。ま、でもやっぱりね、か、考え方。ね。あの、全部やっぱり笑いにしていこうというのと、うん。I think it does really influence that in a sense.、Uh, partly the sound, but the, the most important, I think there is the rhythm, really. But also that, that way of thinking as well, you know, always finding the humor in everything. うん、やっぱりさっきのそのカウンティングもそうなんだけど、こう、ちょっとやっぱりこうね、こう、歌ってる感じね。うん。And like in the counting as well,、うん、the fact that it is almost in this sort of singing kind of way. あと、母音が強いね。うん。And the, the vowel sounds are particularly stronger actually as well.、うん、母音が強いからやっぱりこう、ちょっとこう、ラップ,ラップっぽいっていうかさ、こうなんかこう、<laughs> and because these vowel sounds are stronger in the sense, it, it means that it, it almost has this sort of rapping kind of element to it as well, the way that it's coming on these rhythms and, and the words. <laughs> so I think maybe if I was 20 years younger, you know, because I grew up on the street, maybe I would have ended up being a rapper. <laughs> In Japan, you know, when, when we were young, rap hadn't really made its way here, except in people who were very much you know, following all the trends. So I, I picked up a guitar, but I, I should have picked up a microphone instead. <laughs> That's what I should have been doing. <laughs> There's still time for slam poetry or something like that. There's still plenty of time to do like some slam work, spoken word poetry. That would be great.、Um, so I have, an, <laughs> I have another audience question.、Um, Do you feel that your、uh, main heroines reflect the philosophy you spoke of earlier, or just, as, or just an aspect of the bigger narrative of your stories? それこそ男に殴られてる女の人たちで行くところがない子供たちっていうものが本当に私の、まあ、全部だったわけね。でそ,それで、あのー、私はだんだんその人生の彩り変わってきたけどもうその私育ってきた環境を絶対に忘れることはないないですね。So, as I mentioned, you know, I, I grew up in this sort of street kind of situation in, in the working class as well. And since I was a child, you know, seeing you know, many working women around me, women who were being beaten by men, children who had no place to go, this was you know, what I was surrounded by everywhere as I was growing up. And while my life situation may have changed, of course, that's something that, that you can never forget. That's always part of you. But one, one moment that I really remember very clearly、mm. is, you know, at, at a time when didn't have anywhere to go, you know, didn't have、mm. enough to eat, was feeling very hungry, but turning on the tap、mm. to drink some water and saw the drops of water that were coming out of that tap in this, you know, very deliberated kind、mm. of area, but being absorbed with the light in there and being this truly beautiful moment, this beautiful、mm. thing. Mm. 葉っぱの輪郭とかね。なんかね、そういう美とか、何か大きなもの、向こう側にあるものっていうのが、ど、どんな状況でも、なんか、来てくれる瞬間っていうのがあったんですよ。子供の時から。And that was about the water, but there was also, you know, those moments when you see the sunset or, you know, the shape of a leaf,、yeah. this, this beauty, which is on, on the other side and part of this greater thing, no matter in, in the middle of how difficult things are, I always found since I was a child, there would always be this moment when that beauty would come to me. And of course, you know, beauty and art, it's not something which, you know, you can make a living or it, it doesn't make your stomach full. でもね、でもね、何かしらではあったんですよ。その、世界がこのようにあるっていうことが。うん
And so while it may not fulfill your physical hunger in that sense, you know, this beauty as well, being there in a sense, that there is something that it brings to you. And so it's a very peculiar thing, but I've always been thinking about these things such as, you know, as, as humans, we are here living in our bodies, but of course we are all going to be dying one day. The beauty which is around us may continue even after, you know, we are, are not present here, even after we die as well. And how time changes even in that sense as well. These concepts are always something that I'm, I'm considering. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, that's like, it's an incredible outlook, I think. And it's one of the things that I find so incredibly powerful in your work, Mieko, and the um, just all, all of these brilliant women, these brilliant female characters in your work that start off um, quiet, maybe a little meek, maybe a little bit hopeless, but find something so great like all of your female characters have their moment of greatness, um, whether it's small or big, but that is still greatness. And that really just resonates so beautifully, I think. And, and that's global, like that's what makes your work so special. And I think why you continue to be translated in 20 languages. Um, so we're we're cl we're coming to the end, but I did want to bring I want to bring Callie back into the conversation for this last question because I'm always curious about um, writers' process and sort of um, you know what what that looks like for you when you're writing these things and sort of a what's your process look like and then b where do you find your sort of inspiration and your comfort and your decompression throughout your writing process? Because if you're writing heavier topics or if you're writing, you know, things like this, where do you go to sort of get that inspiration back and recharge yourself throughout your process? Thanks for that question, Kelsey. Uh, so it's been a little different for me because I started out as a short story writer, but I have this debut novel coming out that was, it's historical, it's heavily researched. And it's based on my ancestors and their lives. So I am a Chicana of mixed indigenous Filipino and Jewish ancestry. And when I was growing up, we didn't exist in books, especially that combination of people. And so I thought it was really important to capture these voices and put them into Woman of Light. And so that was a 10 year process that required a lot of research of listening to my elders, recording, taking down notes, um, but with the short stories, it's a lot more a reflection or a mirror of my daily life. So I'm working on a story right now, and I'm moving to Austin, Texas to teach. And would you believe it? My character is a country singer who lives in Austin. And so I do work with my own life in a lot of ways. But another thing that this story is examining is sort of my coming to age in the, the aughts. So it's around 2008, 2009. And I'm really sort of examining what it felt like to be an artist who who was grew up poor, who never thought I was going to be able to make a living at this and seeing where my career has taken me now. So I think that's a lot of the reason why Mieko's work is just, it felt like I was finding a long lost sister writer when I found her work. And it just makes me so happy and proud to see that there are women that are coming from the margins of any society and our voices are being heard now in large ways. And one of the one of the main things I want to do with my work is inspire other writers to keep coming and keep adding your voice to this conversation. Mm -hmm. Mieko. So ne inspiration hontoni ano kyoku kara mo yatte kuru shi ano genzai kara mo yatte kuru sore de yomu mono kara mo mochiron yatte kimasu ne. So it's this kind of inspiration, of course, it comes from memories, it comes from today, and also comes from different things that you read as well. But of course, you know, if someone has a particular experience, it doesn't necessarily mean that they are able to express that in words. いくつもの
大,大好きで特別な一冊なんだけど。And I think all of these different factors come together in this multi layered way as well. And Kali's work of the short stories、mm. has a very special place、uh, for me, actually, as,、mm. as well. Yeah, I think it's a very special place for me, actually, as well. Yeah, I think it's a very special place for me, actually, as well. Yeah, I think it's a very special place for me. So, of course,、mm. I, I read the Japanese translation of,、mm. uh, of your,、mm. your short stories, but the、mm. translation was also very excellent. And so, reading in Japanese,、mm. it's difficult to think of how to express it, but one of the things that we discussed in, in the L interview as well. Ah, you know, what do you know? I know, ありながらすごく抑制を聞いた文章のなんていうか文章運びみたいなものっていうのは狩のそのカリさんの性格なのかあれは本当に作られたものなのかって当時も質問した覚えがあるんだけど。And I remember asking you at the time as well about the, in your words, your writing. In, in a way, there's this very sort of objective、mm. sense to it, sort of hold, holding something back in a, in a way、uh, in, in the words, in the sentence. And I, I was curious, I think I remembered asking whether that's your, your personality or if that was a deliberate sort of way of, of writing. Emotional, 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 本当にそれが自分がその場にいたようなリアリティを残すんですよ、カリさんの小説って。And so, of course, many very emotional things do happen in, in the stories in your work, but they're not necessarily written about in a very emotional way. And I think that really has the effect of making the reader feel that you're becoming part of that reality and it sticks with you as reality in that sense. で、あの、本当に色のね、比喩とかね、その人のその、比喩もすごいの。例えばすごくね、デパートの売り場に行ってね、美しい肌の女の人に会った時にね、この肌は本当に何,何代にもわたって保湿を続けてこられるような富裕層しか持てない肌だみたいなことを言ったりするのね。その比喩とかも忘れられなくて。And so, some of the way that you write about color and hues in your work as well, one of the, the expressions that has really stuck with me that I can't forget at all is about、uh, the scene in the department store. And it's talking about the woman with a particular hue of skin, which could only be maintained by these generations of you know, wealthy、mm. women in, in that sense as well. <laughs> and I actually, in, in my iPhone, I have、uh, copied this, the, the Japanese translation of that scene, the way that you describe these hues and so on. And I, I really come back to it quite often to read it over again. It's very interesting. And it's just such beautiful words there as well. But within this description of one particular color, there's so many different things that come into it. And there are so many things within your work that make me think, I wish that I could write like this. So I'm really, really looking forward to your novel. Yes, I think I'm, we all are. And I want to say thank you both again so much for this conversation, for bringing both of your expertise and your insights into your work. Uh, Kali, for the questions that I was keeping my fingers crossed that you would ask.、Um, and, you know, just, just sharing your talent and sharing your work with us.、Um, it's, you know, it's a richer reading experience having heard from both of you、um, about this beautiful novel and eventually from Kali for this, for her novel in June. We're so excited about it. And、um, I want to thank again. Everyone at Books and Books for organizing this, for putting this platform together for us so that this conversation could happen. The Miami Book Fair,、um, Politics and Prose, the Harvard Bookstore.、Um, and thank you again for allowing Tom Below to play a small role in this evening. And Miri, again, thank you for being so incredible.、Um, Europa, and, yeah, Europa and everyone、um, who joined us this evening. Thank you all so much. And I hope if you have not gotten your copy of All the Lovers in the Night, get it, pick it up, 
Greetings, <laughs> favorite. <Arigato. laughs> and Thank then you. Arigato. And then check out Sally's book. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for um, today. I had so great time. Thank you, Karin. And, and arigato. Thank, Thank you, you everybody. Thank you, Mieko. Bye. 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 Bye.